Hi, my name is Will Hooker and I'm a current senior at Richfield High School. Um, for as long as I remember, um, I've always been drawing dinosaurs in my free time. In fact, this probably started when I first went to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Um, in fact, I still go there today. Um, I go there a lot, actually. Um, I always love the fossil halls, especially, you know, the dinosaur floors, so the Sauratian or Nishian dinosaurs. Um, over time, I've developed from just drawing dinosaurs to studying more um, paleo art, which means I'm trying to accurately depict um, all ancient and prehistoric life according to scientific evidence. Um, of course, drawing dinosaurs is my favorite part of that, but there's much more to it than that. Um, and that's what I'll try to go over in this video. Um, also, as you can see behind me, paleo art has played a role in my more recent work. Um, so this is from my AP art class in high school this past year. And here I was trying to investigate um, our more basic fears, instincts, and desires. And I was using different types of monsters or creatures from different sci-fi movies to um, portray that. Okay, in terms of supplies you'll need, um, I always recommend using um, a set of drawing pencils. Um, however, if you don't have that and you just have like a regular old pencil, like a mechanical pencil or whatever, number two pencil, whatever it may be, um, that's also fine. Um, sometimes I actually have more fun with the mechanical pencils just because they create their own cool effect when you're trying to shade. Um, so that's always something fun to keep in mind. Um, the cool thing about drawing pencils though, so I have this little set right here and it comes in this fun little box and it, this basically just shows how they work. So this set goes from HB, B, 2B, 4B, 6B, and 8B. And all that means is they have different leads in them, which produce different shades. Um, so for example, the HB that I have right here um, is going to produce the lightest shade. See how you can almost barely even see that right there? That means that you don't have to press that hard. And if you go really lightly, it's going to produce a very light shade. And even if you do accidentally press really hard, it's still going to create a light shade because of the lead it has, which is called an HP lead. Um, the, higher, the higher up the scale you go, so the farther away you go from HP and the closer you get to 8P or higher than that, there's sometimes I've seen 9Bs. I don't know if 10B exists, um, but I have seen a 9B. Um, it's going to produce a really dark shade. So all that means is if you're using an 8B pencil and you're not even like pressing that hard, like you're just like pressing as light as you can, it's going to produce a really dark shade. And that's really helpful for when it comes to shading because that means you don't have to work that hard to get those darker shades. And you're able to create this kind of tonal gradient of shades, if you will. Um, in terms of other supplies, um, it's always good to have an eraser because people make mistakes and that's part of the process. Um, I have this really cool kneaded eraser, um, which basically means I can take it apart and make different um, sizes. So it helps me with making, you know, fixing smaller mistakes or larger mistakes. Um, and it gets rid of most things. But if you have just a regular eraser at home, that works just as well. Um, and then lastly, it's always good to have a sharpener um, to sharpen your pencil and keep a sharp point. Um, but other than that, um, that's all the supplies you need. So just a pencil, eraser, and a sharpener and paper and you're all set. Um, okay, so here are some general tips when drawing dinosaurs, prehistoric life, um, or even any animal for that matter. Um, this is a practice sketch I was doing. So this is actually, this animal is called Rugops primus, and it was originally drawn by a paleo artist named Todd Marshall in 2007. And I'm using it just as a reference to practice. So I always say a good rule of thumb is always use references wherever you can. Um, it helps you work on the anatomy and get the morphology right of different dinosaurs. Um, but when you're directly copying something, that's totally fine to develop the skill. So here I'm literally looking at an image he had already drawn, um, as long as I'm not publishing it as my own work. Um, and that's important to remember um, if you're trying to pursue um, the arts as a profession. Um, but for practice and for fun, that's totally fine. Um, so some general information I can give when I'm doing any kind of sketch. Um, always look at the reference. So I know that seems very obvious, but um, sometimes when you start drawing, you forget to look back at your initial picture. Um, here, I'll give you the example uh, right here. So if you look away long enough, you know, you're going to start to, you know, draw what you think should be there. But more often than not, your mind actually ends up tricking you and you draw something that shouldn't even be there. So 
I'm drawing that right there. And as you can see, it's a little different, but it's still pretty similar in that regard. Um, so always keep looking at your um, reference image, um, but also a good way to lay out things, and this is called a composition, is just to do very basic shapes. So as you can see right here, there's these transparent lines. So I drew very lightly simple circles, and that just helps me lay out where the dinosaur is going to be and to make sure everything works um, proportionally, meaning that the head isn't too big, the body's not too small, the arms are the right size, and so on. Um, so what I do is I just very gently just draw little circles of where I think things should be, and I'm always looking at the original image or reference um, as a guide. Um, the next part of when I'm drawing is to start adding in details, so after you draw these simple shapes in. Um, so as you can see right here on this arm, all I really did was I took my little circles that I drew, that are very lightly, and I just basically slightly darken them in so that you get a rough shape of an arm going right here. As you can see back here, this arm I didn't do yet is still very light, but here it's much darker, you can see it, and you can work with that. Um, once you draw in everything, and also this is just um, for show, I'd recommend doing everything first. So like when I normally do this, there'd be a tail, you know, you'd see the claws, this arm would be finished, then there'd be legs. Um, but this is just to show the different steps in the process of when I draw. Um, the last step I do is shading, and shading is kind of difficult if you're new to it, but once you practice it enough, I think it's it's fun, and it creates depth. So as you can see right here, this is very flat, it's almost like an outline, whereas over here it starts to look, it starts to look more real, more 3D, that kind of thing. Um, if you don't have drawing pencils, um, and I'll explain that in a second, um, all you really gotta do is the darkest areas with your pencil, press down the hardest, and that creates a dark line, obviously. Um, and as you move away from that dark edge, slowly um, pick up your pencil, if that makes sense. So I can do it right here. So if you do it really lightly, you know, you're not gonna see much, but then as you press down harder and harder, it's gonna make a darker line. So if you're able to do, create this kind of um, tones, I guess is the right word, um, throughout your drawing, it creates depth. So in general, um, my general rule of thumb when I'm shading dinosaurs is the darkest areas are always on the bottom. I always like to have my light source up here in the top top left. So the darker areas are going to be on the bottom right, if that makes sense. So any area that's facing towards the bottom, so like the bottom of his jaw, um, the bottom of his, um, I'm blanking on the word right now, his body, his body, his arms, um, anywhere like over here, this whole right side of the arm would be darker, and then this whole left side of the arm would be lighter. And in general, that creates a 3D kind of effect when you shade. Um, and then if you have drawing pencils, you can actually change the shade, um, and I'll just explain that a little bit again, um, by using different kinds of LEDs. Um, and after you're done shading, what I like to do is go in and add details. So if there's like little, um, little feathers, little... Um, spikes coming off of it, the nose, little ridges behind the eye, the eye itself, teeth, tongues, that sort of thing, or little like um, folds in the skin like over here, uh, any of those sort of things, or even like this kind of thing going down its neck. Um, those I always do at the very end just because they're very delicate and I don't want to mess it up and I don't want the shading to um, make it disappear per se. So like say I'm shading really hard and I go over this, you might lose that nice little effect that it has. So I chose a uh, T-Rex figure um, to demonstrate in today's drawing um, just because I actually have it and it's physical and I took a bunch of pictures of it from different angles to give um, you a chance to draw in different um, viewpoints at home. Um, you can also pause the video and go back and screenshot these um, angles um, to practice on your own. Um, I'm going to use the first one and I'll um, overlay it over when, when I'm talking about different parts of the drawing. Um, to demonstrate what I'm doing, um, but you can choose whatever angle you want, and my general guidelines should work for either, any way you go. Before I begin explaining how to draw the T-Rex, um, I just wanted to apologize for the image quality here. Um, I was trying to make a time lapse, which I'll show at the end of the video, of the entire process of making this dinosaur, um, but unfortunately when I was taking screenshots of the time lapse, um, to show key parts of the process, it made very blurry images, and there's nothing I can really do to fix that. 
um, but I'll still try my best to explain. Um, the first step here, all you're really doing is using very, very basic shapes to create a composition of the T-Rex. So if you look closely, you can see that the body is really just a circle and attached to it are just more ovals, circles, and triangles. So with the exception to the tail, because the tail is just kind of a fun shape that you can just kind of draw on. But if you look at it, the body, again, is a circle. Neck is very oval-shaped. And then the head is really just two ovals coming together, just kind of overlapping. Um, legs, it's really just ovals creating different shapes. And then the feet are more or less triangles at this point. The arms aren't even really there yet, because I feel they're much more of a detail in this phase. Um, and we'll get to more of their outline in the next step. Um, one thing to keep in mind is to draw very lightly in this stage, because this is where you can make mistakes. It's okay to work things out. Um, that's why you have your eraser with you. Um, so make mistakes, enjoy the process, um, and just try to get the overall proportions right. So try to make sure the head isn't too big, the tail is too small, that kind of thing. Make sure everything works in relationship with one another. Um, and once you've figured out that, then you can move on to the next step, which is creating an outline. In the next step here, you can see things are much more defined, um, and you're starting to see a general T-Rex kind of look to it. Um, the arms are much more filled in. Um, you're starting to see feet, and you can see the claws in each thing. I drew the teeth in and the tongue. I don't really think that's necessary this step, but if you want to, go for it. Um, it just gets a little more difficult when it comes to shading around those tiny little teeth. Um, that's what makes it hard. So generally, I keep him toothless until the very end. Um, but if you feel like he, um, he or she should have teeth, go for it. Um, all I really did here was I took the very basic shapes we did in the first step and just outlined them to make a general body. Um, there's nothing much to this step here, but again, I'll remind you to stay very light when you're drawing just because you're going to shade this in later. And if you're making really dark marks now, it's going to be hard to create that 3D effect later. Um, the one difficult part about this step for me personally, and I think it might be hard for some people too, is the uh, feet of the T-Rex. Um, my recommendation here for when doing the feet is to basically think of them as, like the tips of the toes is what I'm talking about, think of them as almost like circles or cylinders, I guess is the right word. Um, so if you're looking at the his right foot, so the left side of the page, but his right, um, the two toes there, they're more or less just round cylinders, and then at the end of them, there's little triangles that come off, and those become the the claws. Um, as long as you're keeping the shape simple and you're making things connect to where they should, you'll be fine. Um, don't try to overthink it, though, because it does look really weird when you're looking at the reference photo. Um, but I just say go with it. And once you do shading, shading, you can also correct a lot of things, too. So as long as you keep it light, just go with it and draw what you see, you should be fine. The third step of the process, I think personally, is the hardest, and that's because it's shading. Um, I actually never shaded things. I always kept them in the outline stage, um, which is the last step that we just did, um, just because I was always too nervous that it ruined the drawing. Um, but what I've learned over the years um, is that it's good to be ambitious, to try to make mistakes, to to be a risk taker, I guess is the right word, um, just because it helps you develop your skill. And nothing makes you get better at something than failure. Um, and it's not even failure, it's just, it's just learning. And I think it's good to practice and to always get better, and there's no better way to practice than to just go for it. So with shading, um, my recommendations, so as I said with the other um, drawing, the Rugoff's Primus drawing, um, I like to have my um, light source on the top left of the page. I don't really think that's true for this drawing. It's based on where I took the picture um, of this toy. But in general, I keep my darker shades towards the bottom of any piece um, of body part. So as you can see, like on the mouth again, the lower jaw, the d darkest part is right in the bottom. Um, right under the neck is the darkest part. The bottom part of the body is darkest. 
um, and anywhere where things meet, so like where the legs meet the body, where the tail meets the body, um, the arm, so especially the T-Rex's right arm, the arm that's on the, our left, but it's his right arm, that one's especially dark just because it's under that whole body, so you would naturally kind of see a shadow cast under him in that spot. Um, also a fun tip is I usually just shade in the, the claws one shade of 8B. Um, or just press down as hard as you can if you're just using a regular pencil. Um, just because it's such a tiny little detail, and if you try to shade that, it might create kind of a... It might not make sense, I guess. But you can try to go, f go for it and try to shade it, but personally, I just color the whole thing in. Um, with the teeth, I usually leave them white, just because I think the teeth are just fun that way. Um, you can also shade those in. Oh, and also the inside of the mouth is usually the darkest part. So if you look right where his, um, I guess where his lip comes out, um, that's really a dark piece right there. And then especially the eye too, where all those different ridges meet, um, on the bottom left corner on our, in our perspective, that's a really dark area too. Um, so yeah. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to say, um, especially since I didn't have this resource um, when I was younger. Um, if you're a kid who's really interested in either paleontology, science, art, paleo art, um, anything like that, um, geoscience is a real major that you may want to consider, um, even though that may seem a long way from now. Um, I've always been into paleontology, as I mentioned before, um, and that led me to applying to Drexel University in Philadelphia where I'll be studying geoscience this fall. I'd also like to thank you for following along with me in this video and drawing a T-Rex with me. Um, if you're interested in any more of my paleo art, my artwork in general, or even my AP work from my um, art class um, this past year in school, um, you could always visit my website and I'll link it um, at the end of this video. I also have an Instagram that goes by the same name. Um, it's called Revolutionary Concepts. Um, feel free to check it out. It has mostly of my AP work right now, but I'm also getting a lot more paleo art and general art up there. Um, thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed learning how to draw dinosaurs.